Hi, my name is Michael Bean. I'm a professional film and TV acting teacher. I've been teaching for 20 years now, as of May this year, uh, 20 years of uh, teaching professional film and TV acting. Today, we're doing a self-tape review. This is for myfreeactingclass.com. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, or if you're watching this video on YouTube, you're like, wait, what? I wanna know more about this thing. Well, you're in luck. All you've got to do is go to, uh, where are we? Um, come on now. Programs, programs, programs. Uh, having a little bit of trouble finding you know, where I show you these things. You'd think that I hadn't done this before, but for whatever reason, it's not popping up. Well, uh, you'll just have to take my word for it. Uh, the uh, what we want is to go to uh, myfreeactingclass.com and uh, you will find uh, the link to the video archive. You'll also find the link to these lessons. They happen at uh, 5 to 6 p.m. every Monday, Pacific Standard Time, Pacific Daylight Time, rather, which is UTC minus seven. Uh, we've got you know, some folks in Europe and you know, some folks you know, kind of all over the place watching the lessons, and that always makes me happy, you know, the democratic nature of it. Uh, so I uh, want to do a quick review, uh, just visually, of something that I talked about last week. You know, so this is just my attempt to uh, try and make visual some of the uh, something uh, that I talked about in uh, the last couple of weeks lessons, you know, and I was like, um, I feel like I just really have a visual to see if I can, that can really help land it for people. You know, so this idea of the essence of who you are as a person, it's very broad, it's very contextual, you know, you're going to uh, behave different with different people, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. There are some things in, the, in which you're going to have ease. Now that's either ease because and there's something about that character that sort of fits with your social persona, ease because you've practiced that character a bunch. You know, there are a bunch of different things that go along with that sense of ease, but it is a, a feeling, a felt sense, both for the people watching you know, and for you, and typically goes with greater uh, range of expression, right? So your voice, you know, has more ups and downs. There's physical relaxation uh, to it, right? You don't have, there's no habitual tension there, you know, and the character, um, the way that it's summed up subjectively by people watching is that it looks and sounds like a real person talking. We are not seeing the actor effort at all. We're not seeing, we're not, oh, I see what you're trying to do. We're like, oh no, this seems easy. No. Uh, the, often uh, actors get really excited about characters that are like you know, uh, either outside of their purview or outside of what's easy. They're like, well, this is part of my essence as a person, you know, but sharing it is not something I'm uh, that used to, or this is not you know, something that I'm connected to at all. It's not part of my essence, and it's not something that's easy, but it's something really exciting to me. I want to be a psycho killer, and I'm going to practice a psycho killer, you know, because I love those characters. You know, but uh, if you don't, if it doesn't come across as you, and doesn't it, and it doesn't come across as easy, probably can't be paid to do that. You know, and so uh, what you look like and sound like strongly influential, obviously, in what you can be paid to do. Typically speaking, your first two, five, 10, 27 roles professionally in film and TV are going to be in this sweet spot right here, this red star between what you can make look easy, you know, and what you look and sound like, which may or may not have anything to do with your essence as a person. You know, so that's deliberate that that is outside the circle of your essence as a person, you know, um, because certainly those two things interact, you know, but what you look and sound like doesn't necessarily tell us as, as human beings whether you are this kind of person or that kind of person, whether you have these kind of feelings or that kind of feelings, this is how you approach life. But there's a sense in film and TV that is strongly influential. All you have to do is watch older British television you know, to really unpack what I'm talking about. You watch older British television, you're like, oh, the hero doesn't look like the hero. The sexy character doesn't look like this sort of North American stereotype of the sexy character. You know, that folks who look and sound in ways that have very little visually to do with how they want the character to be perceived can be cast as that because they're casting for essence, they're casting for ease, right? They're casting just for the acting. Um, and, you know, and in the world of film TV in North America, where there's way more money and way more people to choose from, they are looking for essence, ease, and does it look and sound like the character? Now, if you book enough projects, if you sort of land just the right thing, is it possible to book something you know, that doesn't line up with the way you look and sound? Of course it is. Is it likely? 
for professional film and TV? Probably not. So that's something uh, that I just want to put out there right at the top. Uh, today, we're going to go into a self-tape review uh, in referencing... Hi, Jessica. Nice to see you again. Uh, in referencing a self-tape review, I'm going to end up, whether I want to or not, referencing these story questions. Now, uh, if you are not familiar with these, you're going, what? Where are these? All you got to do is go to myfreeactingclass.com, follow the link to the video archive and to the YouTube channel. But I will tell you here, it is youtube.com uh, slash c slash michael bean my name uh and uh there is a series that i did over the last couple of months called five keys to sick ass, five keys to kick ass self tapes and i went through these one at a time story style relationships changes and want and so i'm going to reference those i might come back to this you know uh as as i'm referencing them um, but that's the way that I've been thinking about self-tapes right now. If you are somebody who is, you're just like, I don't know, I just sort of go by feel when I'm doing self-tapes, strongly recommend, uh, especially if you are sort of newer to professional film and TV acting, you're still internalizing those skills, that you develop some kind of system. Now, does it have to be my story, style, uh, relationship, changes, wants system? No, it doesn't have to be. You know, but that's the one that works for me, and that's the simple one you know, that I use when I teach. And just having a structure, having something where you go through that checklist uh, increases the likelihood that uh, you are going to sort of get all of the things that go with telling a professional quality story for a film and TV script, right? So it just increases your likelihood that you're not going to miss something key and important. One of the things that I always recommend students do is when you first get a script, read everything on the page out loud twice. And I know it's super annoying, especially if you get six pages, but it does slow you down. And again, if you don't yet have sort of a system in place, highly recommend this because it is so easy to overlook some kind of basic piece of where you are what's physically happening to sort of overfocus on what you say and miss the story you're telling. You know, and just remember that as an actor, there's a technical aspect of like, yeah, I got to say my lines and stand in the right place and look in the right place. And you are also an artist, which means you are also a storyteller. One of the best things you can do in terms of feeding that artistic or storytelling side of yourself is just look carefully at everything that's on the page. So uh, thankfully, uh, Duke sent one of his scripts today, Natalia sent her script. So I'll be able to use those as concrete examples, which is why we're going to start by reviewing those tapes first. We've got Duke with us today. Uh, and before the lesson started, he said, yeah, uh, you know, like I got a real thick skin and it's all constructive to me. Um, and I told him that like, it's me, so I'll still be nice. You know, so the, let's uh, go over uh, the first tape, this one was particularly challenging self-tape, so it's interesting to start with uh, because it is a non-verbal one. This is a silent on-camera, or SOC audition, where he is being asked to audition for a role professionally for a film and TV show, but he has no lines, zero, nothing. The script has nothing for him to say and only things other people are saying for him to react to. Uh, before I get into it, let me quickly uh, review. This is what's called a medium close-up. You're seeing me top of the head, you know, down to just below the armpits. Uh, I have a neutral background behind me. It truly doesn't matter what it is. Um, you know, currently the place that I'm in, I needed better light, so I moved it closer to the back wall. I wanted to move it closer to the window, rather. You know, the uh, I didn't like the light at the wall, so I have a collapsible backdrop with blue stretchy fabric on it. Um, it does not have to be something fancy like that. I've seen a curtain. I've seen somebody who just like got stretchy fabric and just like clipped it to things in their house on the wall. I've seen somebody who look like took craft paper and just got like a big roll of it or photographer seamless paper and you just like roll it down. Like, or you just have a neutral wall behind you. It truly does not matter. And anybody who's like, this is gonna make the difference in your bookings, they're wrong. You know, the, I'm sorry, like, is it, is it different when people watch it? Sure. Like 5%. Is that going to make the difference if they're like, wow, Jessica, we really like this tape, but the backdrop, I don't know. Let's move on. Like, that's just not going to happen on the decision maker side. What they care about is this people. So make sure this is well lit. And the reason for a neutral background is just so it's not distracting. 
You know, if you are going to invest money in something before you get fancy with your backdrop, get good lighting. I'm going to show you two different self tapes of mine today so that you can see the difference. Like I said, with the old lighting near the further uh, from the window to the back wall and this one closer to the window. And I'm like, oh, I look so much prettier there. It's not me. My face has not fundamentally changed in the last two weeks. Definitely about this setup. Uh, so uh, this is, uh, again, a medium close up, no headroom. You know, there's no reason to see what's happening up above your head. Uh, we want to, you know, don't cut off your hairdo if you got a fancy hairdo, you know, but also if it cuts off just the very top of your head at some point, right, you like you move in a little bit and the, the head's cut off for part of the tape, truly not a big deal. Like the top of your skull does not give that much information about who you are as a person, you're probably fine. You know, so everybody relax about the technicalities. As long as they can see you and hear you okay, ideally you have, uh, you, like I said, you're well lit because that's what's going to make you look beautiful on camera. That's why there's an entire lighting department and it's a huge deal on set and they spend a lot of time setting up because that's what makes people go, wow, something about that person is just really grabs my attention. Guess what? It's probably lighting. You know, the, like, don't get me wrong, you know, like some, there are some facial features that, you know, like, I think are statistically likely to like pop people's attention, but lighting, enormously important, you know, up your lighting game if you possibly can, because it will make people be like, wow, there's something just really so much more charismatic and attractive about you. Yeah, lighting, just get on it. Uh, the, uh, you want to be louder than the reader, you know, all those things are you know, present for these. Eye line, the imaginary line between your eyes and what you're looking at, uh, needs to be very close to camera, but not directly at the camera. Right now I'm looking at you because I'm talking to you, but ideally you want it just right there, boom, beside the camera, right there, boom, beside the camera. And I'm not going so far off to the side with my eye lines that my eyes are cut off by my face at all. So that's a, just a good kind of benchmark for like, are my eye lines too far off? You know, if you if you got somebody over there who you're looking at once, okay, mom, I'll be there in a second. Talking, 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 no problem. Great, put them all the way off on the side. You know, makes it super clear. You know, but if you've got two things you're going to be looking at or interacting with regularly, just make sure that they're close enough to camera. We can see all your eyeballs because that's what the camera wants to see. That's where we get the illusion that we can see into your brain and see what you're feeling. Uh, so here's tape number one from Duke, and this is uh, Duke doing, doing a character called Nurse Rick. One of the things that has come up in this lesson uh, over and over again is that the, the significance of the first 15 seconds uh, to review Alex's question from last week, he was like, what can I do in those first 15 seconds to make me amazing? Uh, and the, and uh, the, the very quick review of the much longer answer I gave last week is don't try too hard. You know, make sure you show up as yourself, tell the story. You know, and anything extra that you're trying to add to make it look amazing, you really risk setting off there like, wah, 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 somebody's trying too hard alarm. So probably best not to do that for yourself. Uh, here's Duke playing Nurse Rick. Now you can see he has a neutral background. Uh, he is reasonably well lit, although you can see that his, uh, he's lit from overhead, right? So the, the shadows on his face, right? Like basically his forehead is probably like the most flatteringly lit part of him. And it would be nice if that was the front of his face. You know, is that possible in his current lighting setup? I don't know. Is it worth, you know, the investment? Well, like when you know, Duke is ready to sort of up his self-tape setup at home, again, lighting, typically the best first investment, you know, that somebody can make. And with LED lights, it does not cost a lot of money these days. Uh, much, much more affordable than it was, you know, even a couple of years ago. Um, just because there's so many actors using them and you know, for their self-tape setups at home. So, uh, Nurse Rick. Chuck Davy, the president wants to see both of you. Okay, and that's it. That's the whole thing. Chuck Davy. Right, so his eye line is just there on the side of the camera, you know, and then boom, he's got an eye line on the other side of the camera where he's got some physical activity. Uh, in that first, in those first few seconds, you know, and this is not an exact formula, but I found myself saying this to a student last week, and I like it, you know, that um, it in uh, the like the very first few seconds uh, that they watch a the tape, they're going to be thinking, "What do you look and sound like?" You know, and then they're going to think, 
are you telling the story? Do you seem real for the style? You know, and then uh, only if you know, sort of the, you make the cut on those first two, then they're going to start thinking, is this what we want for our version of this story? Right. So to review that, it's like, okay, first it's like, what does this person look and sound like? Okay, great. I'm going to make assumptions based on what they look and sound like. So the fact that Duke happened to have access to, I don't know if this is a rain poncho or an actual, you know, like scrub hospital something, but it looks like it. And it rustles a little bit, but the sound's not too bad. He doesn't have any lines to overlap anyway. So visually he's telling us right away, boom, like I'm in a hospital. Um, the, then it's going to be, you know, does this person sort of seem real within the style of the show? And then they're like, okay, is that what we want? You know, and, and really that's where we want to get. We want to get to that third stage because that's the stage that we have no control over, right? If they decide to cast, you know, a young black woman for this role, that is zero reflection, you know, on Duke's ability to embody, uh, silent on camera, you know, nurse Rick. Uh, are there things you know that we could add to this to help tell the story? Probably. You know, so that's where I'm going with it. Is like, okay, look and sound. Boom. What do we want? Boom. It's that middle piece of like, is this person telling the story? That's where maybe we can get a little bit more mileage. Here it is again. Chuck Davy, the president wants to see both of you. Okay, so um, the way that it looks when you just watch the tape is he's just standing and waiting. You know, somebody's talk, somebody talks, he has a physical business to do, he rolls his eyes, he leaves. So he's got an opinion as he leaves. You know, um, the, so it's like, okay, maybe he just like doesn't want to be there, uh, but it's also very unclear what's happening right at the start. And so the first few seconds looks like an actor who's just waiting to start acting, at least looks that way to me. Um, the, uh, so if we look at Nurse Rick, Oh, there's a breakdown. That's not what I wanted to share. Stop. Uh, uh, if we look at Nurse Rick, the script, here we go. Uh, number one, observatory circle, blah, 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 blah. This is uh, the little piece before. Uh, the, here we go. Start. You can see the start mark there. Uh, good. You're awake. We have to go. Looks to Maddie gives her a thumbs up. Chelsea opens the door. Redfield enters, sees Maddie sitting up in bed. Nurse Rick enters behind him. All right, so this is the spot where Nurse Rick enters. We would read this first bit if we were doing the audition because it tells us where we are. Number one, observatory circle, guest bedroom, night. Okay, you know, so um, good, uh, you're awake, we have to go. Go where? Camp David, the president wants to see both of you. Okay, so that tells me the, that this is you know, political drama. Um, Redfield exits, Nurse Rick disconnects the IV from Maddie's arm off Chelsea and Maddie, unsure what this means. Right, so uh, we saw him uh, unhooking the um, the IV, uh, but it, this is, it's not in a hospital. You'll notice, you know, it's in a guest bedroom. You know, so uh, probably that means that we're somewhere upscale. If you know, there's two different people, you know, in the scene, and they're you know official White House something somethings, and then there's the person in the bed. You know, and so in those first few seconds. Um, that's where, if you were retaping this Duke, there's an opportunity, I think, to come in with some kind of opinion, right? Are you expecting uh, Maddie to be awake? Maybe, maybe not. You know, like, uh, what is your opinion of the two people standing there, right? So there's an opportunity to come in like, oh, uh, hi, you know, Mr. You know, Chief of Staff, um, you know, the, right, like, you're the boss, I'm just the nurse here in the guest bedroom, you know, whereas the, especially that like the opinion at the end, like mm -hmm. uh, reads to me like, you know, busy hospital people are stupid, you know, like I hate my job, you know, and uh, the, uh, maybe, maybe we've got something in the breakdown, you know, that, um, that sort of gives us information that we don't have there. You know, so let's take a quick look at that um, because he was kind enough to uh, the, uh, to send that. So what we've got is character portrayed as uh, 30s or 50s, any ethnicity, male presenting, he disconnects an IV from a VIP patient. Uh, actor role, non-speaking, two scenes. You know, so um, it's a it's a small thing, Duke, you know, but I would say that the, the VIP patient got missed here, right? The fact that this is somebody who's very important, you know, White House, the you know, guy beside you is talking about the president, you know, uh, and that instead we got, we saw um, 
you know, like a sullen, you know, uh, you know, functional, et cetera, et cetera. Now, is that going to make all the difference? No, most, you know, like, like I said, a big part of their decision is going to be based on what do you look and sound like, you know, what do they want for their story? You know, is it possible that th those little bits of story could have showcased you better? I think so. You know, so that, that's where I would say your energy would, uh, I would point your energy if you were redoing this tape. You know, now let's look at, uh, at dad number one and two. This is fun because this is a commercial uh, self-tape and we haven't seen a commercial self-tape for a while. And so here is a Duke doing dad number one and dad number two. Now, I know a little bit about this project because I coached some of the kids uh, who also auditioned for it. So I am somewhat familiar with the script already. Every summer I come out here to school. Um, so you can see one of the things uh, that uh, I'm really seeing looks like maybe a fluorescent lights or white lights, uh, Duke, you know, and, and so I would say that you, that you do look quite pale, you look quite washed out here as well. So it might be worth uh, playing with, if you're recording on a phone, uh, seeing if you can adjust the white balance in some way. Sometimes it's as simple as like tapping on your face and, you know, like dragging it up and down, you know, uh, maybe you can uh, do something to warm the lighting up. Again, we'll just make you look more alive, you know, and human. You know, the, this, this washed outness, uh, I think, um, makes it look, at least to me, more clinical, you know, in a way that is, uh, very that's specific right like the, the maybe if you're like for a doctor or nurse you know sure but for playing the dad probably if you can visually warm it up you know that's going to help you out you know just a simple simple thing you know again you can see that like duke knows what he's doing it's set up neutral background he's nice and loud and clear you know he's got an eye light light reflecting his eyes his eye lines nice and close to cameras you know his eyes are both clearly visible every summer i come out here to school for as long as I can remember. Wow. You see, it's so thin and crispy. It's not just perfect for eating. It's also perfect for skipping. You try. All right, so there's this like really nice, warm, clear relationship with the person beside you, you know, which, uh, and uh, the, the, th the tape itself like is quite warm. You can see that like Duke's sort of um, bringing in a lot more of the warmth and the smile, you know, than the first tape, all of which very appropriate for commercial. I think the pacing on this, you know, is, uh, is quite slow. You know, for comedy, and with this one, they specifically referenced like Chevy Chase uh, in the movie Vacation, and they even uh, producers even gave a YouTube link like, "Here, watch this clip. It's like this." You know, uh, that bringing in that extra energy, you know, might be useful. So if we were taping this, you know, I would say, "Great! Like, I love what you're doing." Before the ta first take, jump up and down four times, right? Like, just do four tuck jumps because that's going to get your heart rate up. You know, and, uh, and then that will pick up the pace by itself, right? You don't want to be out of breath, but having your heart rate going a little bit, you know, often like it'll flush your face a little bit and it'll usually make the person more present. You know, if that, if that happens and the person forgets their lines, okay, well, then that also points out like where you need a little bit more line practice. But Every summer I've come out here to skip for as long as I can remember. Whoa. You see, it's so thin and crispy. It's not just perfect for eating. It's also perfect for skipping. <laughs> you try. All right, so there we go. You know, uh, my notes you know, were, you know, pick up the pace and you can see that he did pick up the pace and it does, it, it's different. He gave two different takes because they asked for a couple of different takes and they will often ask for that. People are usually like, hey, if I've got a short edition, can I, even if they don't say so? Yes, and if you do that, you're taking a risk. Now, in this case, they said, do a couple of different takes. You know, this is why when you get the breakdown, you read through the fine print, exactly how they want the tapes labeled, exactly, you know, the, you know, send a slate as a separate take, no, put the slate at the end, slate these things, make sure you say this. Um, and often in the fine print, it will say, you know, if it's a short scene, do a couple of takes. I mean, at least some casting directors will just sort of put that in their boilerplate, but read through carefully so that what everything you're getting from your agent so you know one way or the other. Uh, the right with a very short scene, you know, it's, I suppose it's somewhat less of a risk, you know, but and, uh, and for a commercial like this, they were asking for it. You know, so the uh, pace was was better, you know, the relationship was still really strong, but did you see this head shake? 
you know, that showed up for the whole, uh, the, your second version of it, Duke, you know, uh, unconscious physical behavior that, uh, that indicates uncertainty, definitely not the right choice for a commercial where you're, you know, trying to upsell pizza. Uh, the, right, so just, just be aware of those, you know, little physical things. So the, if in the second take, you know, the adjustment, you know, that, uh, that I would make on that one, you know, is uh, just to point out this sort of like habitual place that some of that extra energy went. Right? You pick up the face, you pick up the energy, I mean, but then you were brought in the shake. And uh, the other thing uh, is that like, you saw that uh, he made a prop, like, and then you brought it into camera. You're like, man, like good for him for making the prop. I think the mistake there was showcasing it to camera because then it becomes more about the prop you made than you, right? If having a prop, you know, piece of pizza that you made helps you connect to it, great. But that's what it's about. It's about this, right? Whereas like, look at this fabulous thing that I made. Um, the risk is that that looks like you were trying too hard, you know. Uh, and so the if if it's if like I said, if you've got it and it helps you, certainly having a thing in your hand, great. But I would say, um, you know, like that uh, that if we were taping it, I would have you keep it down below where the camera could see, you know. Or if it is coming up, just have it go. Hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, it says I uh, I was supposed to take a bite. Uh, you know, Duke said. You know, and so here's uh, my. Uh, here's what you could do, you know, uh, for a real audition, uh, is taste the sauce, <laughs> right? You know, so, mm, mm, right? Then you're putting your lips on your actual fingertip. You're not miming anything, you know, um, or you could do exactly what he did there, which is just cut, cut taking the bite and just sniff it, right? Which, which again, mm, mm, right? Have the moment. They want to take the moment. What they don't probably want is for you to be saying the lines around food. So it's a good, it's probably good that Duke didn't do like, I'll just eat this cracker. <laughs> like while he's talking, like we don't want that. Jessica made the greatest face at me as I started making those tongue noises. She was like, ooh. Uh, right, producers may have that same reaction. Uh, and uh, the, uh, yeah, yeah, they, so they, and they especially don't want you miming food, you know, uh, especially with commercials, like often commercials will say, take a bite of the thing. And I think Duke made just the right choice, which is just like, cool, I'm going to keep the sense of it, but I'm going to adjust it, you know, for something that like is way easier to do. Uh, because what happens when people, you know, mime food is first, they, they like sort of bring in bad mime hands, you know, and then they take a bite of something and then they go right back to talking and you're like, okay. You're like, you just, you've lost me on the reality like several different times. The thing that I've found uh, that's like sort of a hack for those that works is like I said, dip a finger in the sauce, taste the fingertip. Like if you absolutely have to taste it, you know, and otherwise you make that adjustment. Now that's something that hasn't come up in a lesson for a long time, but I covered in multiple lessons last year, which is that when you get stage direction, start by trying exactly what it says in the script and then look at that and you're like, meh. You know, and then you're like, okay, um, how can I adjust it, you know, to be something that like still tells the same story as in the script, you know, but it works better on camera, you know, try that. And only if those things don't work at all, you know, only then would you cut it entirely. Now for this, you know, it's so much of it is about the action. Like I said, I think Duke made the right call. Uh, let's move on. Uh, so Natalia uh, chose a practice script. Uh, one of Duke's questions before we started the lesson, and this is the advantage, folks, of coming live and in person, uh, is then you get to ask your questions. Uh, and before I start, I always uh, try and ask, hey, like, is there anything on your mind that you want me to talk about today? And then sort of as we're going, if you throw them in the chat window, then I can you know, keep going with the lesson and, and hopefully answer your questions at the same time. Uh, the, so Duke asked, like, what can I do at home to practice? Well, with film and TV acting, uh, one of the best things you can do is just pick a practice scene and tape it. You know, now I know actors who are like, ah, oh, yeah, it doesn't feel right to me, or it's like I can't get behind it. Great. Okay. If you need, if what you need for your system is something that's a real script, go onto actorsaccess.com. You know, scroll through all the indie films that are uh, the on there. Pull something that's a character uh, that you think is a good fit for you. Even if it's somewhere in like, even if it's a real long shot, even if it's in New Orleans, but if you're like, oh no, I, I need there to be a small chance, even if it's just a tiniest little chance of actually booking that role so that I'll do the work. And that's when I, that's what I know will make me excited about practicing. Great. You can give that to yourself as well. 
you, you can look for independent films or student films that are uh, casting and practice with those scripts. You can go on Actors Access and pull independent films you know, from uh, the, you know, a lot of those are from LA. Do you have a shot as a Canadian actor or as an actor in, uh, where are you again, Alex? Spain, the UK? You know, like, some, of, some of it, but like, do you have a shot or like a, at booking a, a role like that? Sure. That tiny a shot because they're going to try and hire somebody local if they can. But if that's what helps you stay excited about it, great. The point is put in the practice. Like ease is what you earn with your practice. And remember, that's what makes you bookable. You know, so uh, Duke's question of like, what can I do? You can pick a monologue. You know, you can pick a, like a film and TV monologue, uh, find a TV show that you really like, you know, look on any of the uh, websites online, you know, find a script, pull out just the monologue piece if you need something you can practice without a reader. You know, and uh, then ideally, you know, go and uh, like get yourself a reader, you know, do your self tape setup, you know, and, uh, and read with somebody on a computer. You know, I've talked about this website. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, but I use it. I like it. It's called weaudition.com. Uh, if I think it costs 10 bucks a month to be a member, uh, but then there are always readers on there, many of whom are just like acting students who want the practice and will read with you for free. So if you're like, oh, I don't, I feel weird asking any of my friends or I don't have actor friends I can ask, great. I just gave you a website, only costs $10 a month. You can go on there and get a free reader just about any time, day or night that you need because they have members who are in the UK, they have members who are in the East Coast of the North America, the West Coast of North America. Like I've been on there at like two o'clock in the morning and there was somebody who was like, yeah, I'm in Russia and I'm like happy to read with you. Great, yes. I can tape my auditions anytime I need. Uh, so uh, the if you do the annoying extra level of work you know, to get the reader and have your setup and prep like you would for a real audition, then of course that will give you the maximum benefit when you actually start doing your real auditions, uh, right? And, and if we were doing a sport, that would just make sense, right? Like, yes, you can do drills, you know, and like high knees or whatever, you know, but if you're just playing soccer the in practice, you know, that's where as much of what you're doing as possible is going to translate over to actually playing the game, right? And if you're a very competitive soccer player, you do both, right? You do the drills you know, and you're playing soccer. But if you, the actor, are just going to choose one, give yourself a practice scene, prepare it like an audition, you know, and, and do that. And you're like, and, and again, if you're like, ah, motivating myself is hard, great. These days, there are self-tape challenges or uh, like monologue challenges. You could sign up for one of those at a school or an, you know, any of these sort of like online. I haven't participated in any of them, but I have students who are like, oh yeah, I did another one of these self-tape challenges where you know, I'm basically paying to be part of a community where they're helping me choose that material and giving me a reason to do one every day. All right? You know, so that's another way to motivate yourself by just connecting it out into the world to other people in some way. Right, the basic idea of like create a huge volume of work, make yourself accountable to someone outside yourself, that's for almost everybody what will get them doing the practice, typically speaking. Yeah, and that's the value of taking classes as well, you know, is that then you're accountable to someone outside of yourself. It's not that you can't do that practice by yourself, but if you're accountable to someone outside yourself, yeah, you're probably going to put in more time practicing, you know, and then uh, when you get uh, external feedback, which you can do for free here by sending me your self tapes, uh, then uh, that lets you adjust your performance. Go, oh, okay, like I was doing this by myself and now I have something extra to think about, right? Now Duke's got this like little head shake to think about that he can watch and go, oh yeah, I'm doing that head shake thing. That's an easy adjustment now that I can see it. And that happens with my own self tapes as well. For me lately, when I've got, uh, I'm working with readers or coaches, I've started telling them, hey, look, I'm an acting teacher. Like I've got all this you know, stuff, but I'm looking at my own self tapes. And later when I'm not trying to do both, when I'm not trying to do the acting and think about them, I'm seeing parts of my self tapes that are just kind of general, where there's a couple of lines in a row that are like, you know, they're not, uh, it's not that they're not believable, but there's a little boring. They're general, they're not specific. You know, and so I've started telling my reader, I need you to be ruthless about your feedback. As long as I can disagree with you, I want you to tell me anytime you think something is coming out of me that's kind of general, because like I might notice that tomorrow, but I might not notice that right now. And having an outside eye for me 
uh, very, very, very helpful. Uh, Alex asked, what is that website? Again, is weaudition.com, weaudition.com. Uh, definitely worth experimenting. So uh, let's look at Natalia's practice scene. Hey, look here. Hey, Barbie, are you lost? Hey, Barbie, I can. Want to play? You want to play? Sure, I will play. Why don't you stand here and play chicken with the bus? Whoa, what's going on? You okay, miss? I'm fine. So Natalia told me that she chose this scene specifically because her character gets to push somebody in front of a bus and she thought that was fun. She did two different uh, takes of it, like two different takes on the character um, for herself as practice. Uh, the second take, which I will show you, is, is really, um, I think, a stretch for her. It's her going like, oh, what's something totally different that I could do just to stretch myself? Totally useful in practice, not uh, something that you'd want to do for an audition because her second one is like really very different than the story. For the second take you'll see is like a, sort of a much just sort of shyer, quieter version of the character, which makes it difficult to imagine her pushing the person in front of a bus. Uh, obviously, you know, uh, some similar notes, you know, to Duke here. Lighting, not great. You know, if this could be like, you know, there could, there was some kind of like a lamp or something. Now, Natalia's often like traveling, you know, uh, with her husband who must do something that involves lots of traveling because she's like, this week I'm in this part of the world. Uh, and so like she is doing her best with improvised equipment wherever she goes. Uh, but, you know, she's in shadow. She doesn't have a whole lot of eye light, makes her look less, you know, uh, alive and interesting, you know, and truly, again, that's probably just lighting here. You know, here's Natalia's second take of that same practice scene. Uh, she tried different wardrobe. And so you can see, right, that what do you look and sound like? There is influence on that. So if we go back to this one, boom, what does this person look and sound like? First few seconds, right? Direct, you know, she's the you know, serious Eastern European, direct eye contact. She's the black jacket. You know, this set to give us one story, you know, and then... Uh, the, uh, you know, uh, I don't know why her hair looks blonder in this. She probably like did her hair. Did she do her hair differently? Is that just my imagination? Oh yeah, yeah, no. Uh, like, so she's got her, uh, her hair uh, done differently to, you know, kind of showcase it. You know, uh, the, uh, the colored shirt. It's the same background. Looks like the lighting uh, is a little different. So that might just be a time of day effect. Hey, look here. Hey Barbie, are you lost? Hey Barbie, I'm Ken. Wanna play? Me? Sure. I will play. Why don't you stand here and play chicken with the bus? Whoa, what's going on? You okay, lady? I'm fine. So really fun uh, in that her reaction to pushing the guy in front of the bus was totally different. The first one we saw a reaction like, oh gosh, now I'm gonna get in trouble. You know, in, uh, in this one, you know, we saw just like, oh, I did it. I pushed a jerk in front of a bus. Ooh, um, you know, like, is that you know, a good fit for the script? Probably not, you know, but like what a fun thing for her to do to stretch, right? Like as you are building ease, playing with characters that are outside of, you know, like what you could do or outside of your essence or don't fit the story. Is that useful? Absolutely. Do not take that risk with a self-tape. That's not what they mean when they say take big risks. You know, uh, that's the kind of thing you do in practice, you know, so that you have more options available to you. Uh, so if we take a quick look at the script, you know, for Dr. Lindsey Green, exterior parking lot day. Uh, and Jamar and Jangelica is waiting in the car, looking at the crowd for Dr. Lindsey Green. Is that her, the Barbie looking woman? Oh, she hates that. Don't ever let her hear you refer to her as Barbie. On the opposite side of the street are some tourists, disrespecting women as they pass along. Hey, baby, want to party with us? Mucho dinero, if you love me long time. Tries to pinch the woman in the ass and the woman screams and walks faster. The crowd is avoiding them. You know, and now uh, we get to the spot where uh, Natalia chose to pick up the scene. Hey, look here. 
Hey, Barbie, are you lost? Hey, Barbie, I'm Ken, wanna play? Uh, sure, I'll play. Why don't you stand here and play chicken with a bus? Uh, Lindsay grabs the guy. Lindsay pushes the guy into an oncoming bus that stops on time. The guy gets mad, ready to hit her. Police whistle. Oi, what's going on? Two guys start running. You okay, miss? I'm fine. She, she dusts herself. Right, so it doesn't say anything about her being embarrassed. It doesn't say anything about her like being worried. You know, the guys start running. She doesn't start running. You know, and so uh, to me, that says that in that first, right, so the look of it, you know, the like hair pulled back a little bit more severe, you know, uh, the you know, dark uh, jacket, like, is this in fitting, uh, fitting the story? At least it's one version of it. You know, like maybe she doesn't look like Barbie, you know, uh, in this particular one. It would be interesting to see like, um, if she was auditioning for this professionally, could she do both, right? Like uh, what's the version of Natalia that's like just really done up, you know, but still has that like severity to it you know, like visually those first few seconds of like, what does this person look and sound like? There is an element here of like, they say, um, hey, Barbie, are you lost? It says up here is the Barbie looking woman. Oh, she hates that. You know, so that's going to be significant in terms of their decision making in terms of casting this character. You know, and then as far as the story goes, in that first take, Natalia, the one that's sort of like closer to uh, what um, is written there in the script, uh, you were like, oh no, the cops. But what actually happens in the script is it says that they run and you're just like, yeah, that's right. You just dust yourself off. You know, uh, and so that, if that's where this goes, you know, then you probably want to give yourself, start as far away from that as possible. I'm just having a nice day. I'm going to ignore these guys. Oh my God, that one actually grabbed my arm. Sure, I'm going to push you in front of a bus. Right, so the... Uh, walking in uh, from the same side as them, you know, so that they can be beside you and force you to turn, uh, I think would have been cleaner, clearer. You know, what we had was sort of you walking in this direction and then they were there. You know, so for the audience perspective, it looked like you'd already seen them, you know, and in fact, you did, I think, in that first take, walk in looking directly at them. You know, whereas in this case, you know, it says that the crowd's trying to avoid them and presumably, you know, Dr. Lindsey Green is also trying to avoid them. You know, so in terms of that storytelling piece, again, is that gonna make the difference? No, not if we're using this idea that like your storytelling ability is maybe a third of the decision-making, right? A third of it is what you look and sound like, you know, a third, and this is just like, I'm just pulling these numbers out of the air. Is this something I've verified with decision-makers? No, just giving you a way as actors to think about it and not obsess about like, oh no, I didn't do one thing nobody's going to see me for an audition again. My life is ruined. Like, these are just ideas. You know, we just want to bring in as much of this little detail as possible. You know, and as a concrete example, I'm going to show you a, a third audition tape from James, who continues to get asked to audition for really big projects. You know, and I've, you know, I've given like some pretty, you know, specific, I gave some pretty specific notes, you know, for, uh, his last couple of tapes, I'm going to give some pretty specific notes here. Is that going to stop him from getting another audition for something big? Probably not. No, he's right. Uh, because the, he's got you know, representation you know, that is you know, positioning him as like, look, here is somebody who looks and sounds like you know, somebody who you uh, can cast very easily. You know, and so that's opening uh, doors for him. You know, the I got to work with him in a coaching session just recently to try and like, you know, tweak one of his tapes. And it was so fun to be like, oh yeah, those pieces are there. Like, let's just tweak the story so that you can kind of show up as yourself, right? That, that, that's back to Alex, to your question. Like, what can I do to stand out? You're like, be skilled, tell a good story. You're like, show up as your, like actually as yourself. Don't try too hard, <laughs> right? Like, the, don't be the actor who's like, you uh, we're casting later is going to be like, yeah. And then he just did a backflip out of nowhere. You know, character, character had nothing to do with backflips. Like, who is this guy? What is he doing? Right. The, uh, yeah. Or, or the one who shows up like all in like in full military fatigues with the like combat assault rifle for the thing where he's like guard number three and has one line, you know, so, cause then they're just going to be looking at the outfit going, like, wow. Did that guy go rent this outfit? Like, what is his deal? <laughs> Instead of, you know, like paying attention to your acting and thinking like, oh, who is this as a person? And, you know, in addition to guard number three, you know, what else can we bring him in for? You know, now that we have a sense for like who he is. So there's, there's my pitch for that.
Uh, so last tape from James. Uh, if you're a young person watching this tape, content warning, he swears, which is not a big deal if you've ever watched anything on YouTube, but I feel like I have to tell you anyway, because last week it came out of nowhere and I was like, ah, surprised, I should review this beforehand. So uh, watching James as the assistant to the mafia boss. Right, uh, beautiful setup. Like, look how clear this eyelight is. One of the reasons James looks great in this tape is because he's well lit, you know. And and this is his home setup, you know, which is just like something's you know st like stuck onto a wall and pulled tight. You know, he has a couple of like little portable lighting stands, you know, and uh, you can see that he dressed the part for you know his idea of like here's what fits this, you know, and it's a character who is a um, assistant to a mafia boss. I want to tell that visually in the first few seconds. That's a lot of green for ringing the doorbell and picking up some Benjamin and rocks. That's what we're going to do to her after we're done grabbing. Whoa, I did not sign up for no heavy shit like that. I'm cutting out. No one's cutting out. You're driving. What? You're going to let a woman tool your 62 cherry? It ain't got a scratch on it. Man, fuck his car. I thought the damn deal was we ring a damn doorbell and grab some old lady jewels. Man, what's the deal? Deal is someone's gonna get shot tonight. Oh my God. And about now, it's looking like it might be you. Okay, so uh, scene one, you know, like visual setup, you know, like we can hear him, like I said, eye light, he's right in the middle. He's in more of a, like a medium shot you know, than a medium close up totally fine for something like this. I think anywhere in between, uh, you're kind of in, uh, in good shape. So all of the adjustments there are story. I don't have a copy of the script to show you, uh, but from watching that first one, hopefully enough of it you know, came through that you can see that you know, he's, they're planning to knock on some lady's door and steal her jewels and her money. You know, the person who's with him is like, and then we're gonna kill her. And he's like, whoa, what? You know, he tries to leave. The guy threatens him. Okay, now he's going along with it. You know, so there's so there's really nice clear arc in the scene, and I don't think that's reflected by James's performance. You know that um, he did that thing that often happens. You know, uh, with uh, with actors like where his voice stayed up here, right? A little little too loud and a little too high. Really normal. You know what happens? Is, like that's a very normal thing to do when we actually get excited. Hey, Alex, it's so good to see you. Um, what happens is I think actors get adrenalized and their voice goes up there and they don't notice. And that's the vocal equivalent of this little head shake thing I was saying with uh, Duke. It's basically like you just got to notice these things when they happen because they pull you out of the full range of your voice. And you'll see in scene two, there is a spot where he drops into his voice and you're like, oh, that's what he sounds like when he's just talking. That sounds like a person just talking. And, what, and it would have been really good uh, if I was coaching that scene, I would have been like, pull way back with that first line. I was like, whoa, wow. Okay. Like we're getting paid. Nice. You know, but uh, keep it much simpler, much more real. You know, so that they're, we're giving space for those big reactions that are come late, going to come later. You know, and I would say that the, the actual threat level that went with this first scene, um, you know, it wasn't really present. I didn't get a sense, of, right? So there's that piece of the story, you know, uh, where there's that acting piece of style where, you know, where I don't totally believe him because I think there's that extra vocal energy he's not noticing. And then there's a relationship, the relationship with this other person doesn't seem like the other person is a threat. When the other person threatens to kill him, it kind of comes out of nowhere, doesn't feel honest or grounded to me. You know, so, um, so reevaluating that relationship to the other person was genuinely a threat. You know, was actually somebody who, you know, uh, he looked up to, respected, you know, uh, wanted to impress, you know, but who was dangerous, you know, would change that script pretty substantially. But like I said, those changes are written in there, but we'd want to start as far away from the changes as possible. And then we'd have to go like, what does this character want? Or does this character want to impress the person he's talking to? You know, does he want to just like make some money and get out of here? Does he want to be like, probably the best bet is to give it a, a clear want that's connected to that other person. What do I want that person to do or feel? I want that person to you know, respect me. I want that person, you know, to like, I want to make that person laugh. I'm going to be like, hey, I'm the funny guy. Maybe that's uh, the, the scene. And certainly he approached it with a lot of lightness. But in order for that lightness to read, it would have needed obstacle, right? It would have would have needed... You know, because the scene's about like him reacting to, whoa, whoa, I don't want to kill somebody. Oh, I also don't want to get killed. Find him to go along with it. 
you, even if he was trying for lightness, it would have needed the gravity of, oh, that's, I've got to treat that as real, you know, and that's going to make it harder to find that lightness, right? I'm going to deal with that. And you'll see in the second scene, he's tied to a chair. So it definitely, the script definitely continues, you know, uh, in that vein of like serious things are happening. But we both know you ain't got the brains for that sponge. So tell me, who sent you to it? Or I'll make it. It was a woman. A woman? Right. Maybe drop off. There. And so there his voice finally drops into just like just him talking. You know, um, that that initial burst of bah! You know, where did that come from? Right, like, and I get it vocally, cinematically, it, it makes sense. But if he's going to make that choice, that has to be justified for, like, is the person coming closer to him? Is the in that which case all it would take is that little lean back, like, ah, don't hit me, okay? You know, the but something in that moment before to justify that, even if he wants to like lead with that big pop. And here's what I mean vocally: She drove us there and cut out when shit went down. Right, and it's very honest. It's very clear. Does it seem like this person is under threat right now? Like, right, he's tied to a chair. This other person is threatening his life. Is that coming through uh, physically, vocally in the scene? I don't think so. You know, now we might say that like, oh, he's, the character is supposed to be a assistant of mafia boss, supposed to be really tough. Great. Still, there's that obstacle. Like, make it more difficult for yourself, you know, so that it can come through. Who was she? I don't know, man. She was black. Africa black. I'll do more than black. Right, and again, like this, uh, this stuff lost in thought. It does really read, but that relationship is missing. Like it does, this does not feel like an interrogation. But he is tied to a chair and being threatened for this information, which you know uh, presumably is something he does not want to reveal, but is being forced to. You know, and I'm not getting that piece of the story, except from the conditions. I'm not uh, getting that from James's performance. Right. <laughs> Could have been the finest sort that ever peeped between two heels. Had a nice powdered blue coat on. Must have cost a pretty penny. My name is. Right. So then there's um, the some kind of like clear reaction at the end. You know, uh, but do you see what I mean about like bringing in the the story there? Uh, the and again, you know, is that going to make a difference in terms of like James's next audition or the next one? No, probably not. You know, uh, not right now. This this isn't like night and day. You know, he's doing a lot of things right. Here, he, like here are the things as an acting teacher that I'm like, oh, here's what we can change. Here's what you can bring in terms of bringing your own skill, bringing your ability to tell the story. Uh, the last thing that I want to show you before I just open it up for sort of final questions, I, I promised I would sh uh, show my uh, self-tape setup at home. So the last couple of times that I set up at home, I was like, oh, I'm going to take a picture because I'm going to show the like uh, the students in the free acting class. So here's uh, what Michael Bean's self-tape setup looks like, just so you know, right? The So a uh, couple of storage boxes on a chair you know, with a box and a stack of yoga blocks and a laptop, you know, and then you know, my phone connected to this, you know, like beat up old ring light that I don't ever use the light anymore. Now it's just like a, you know, uh, stand for my phone. And then this actual ring light in the window, you know, and then, like I said, just recently, I started moving it closer uh, to the window, you know, and so uh, this was, uh, this was today. You know, so this is what the, the setup that I'm currently in, this is what it looks like, actually. You know, like took this an hour before class. You know, and so if you saw this, you'd be like, man, chaos. Like this guy doesn't know what he's doing. But instead, because you see this, uh, looks like I'm a professional, looks like I know what I'm doing. That's the whole point. You know, what the camera doesn't see actually doesn't count for your auditions. So just a concrete reminder of that. Uh, any final questions before I wrap for today? Thanks so much for sticking it out with me for a whole hour. Cover, I feel like I covered a lot of material, uh, but I'm bringing together things that I've been talking about in the last couple of months in a way that I'm finding enjoyable and uh, to just keep finding clarity there. Last questions? Okay. Uh, if you're like, hey, I like the Michael Bean guy, where can I find more of him? Well, I already told you the YouTube channel. Uh, there, uh, you can uh, look up confidence on camera or Michael Bean, 
uh, on YouTube. Uh, you could also go to michaelbean.ca, that's M-I-C-H-A-E-L, bean, like the vegetable, .ca, and find information about uh, my acting classes and coaching with me. Uh, or you could just keep coming to these and getting all that stuff for free because I love teaching for free and it does, it helps um, me feel like, you know, I am connecting out into the world in a way that's meaningful for me. You know, like I, when definitely when I was a new actor, I absolutely could not have afforded to take a, you know, like high level every week acting class, you know, and so that's been a, a piece of cognitive dissonance for me as a teacher for a long time. You know, and in the last couple of years of the pandemic, it's really been helpful for me to go, oh, wait, I can give away everything that I know because you can see it is so hard to pack it all into an hour. You know, and there will be plenty of times when you're practicing when it's still useful to have somebody look at you from the outside and say, with you specifically, here's something to think about. Uh, so just keep showing up. You know, and if you want that feedback on your practice, uh, send me your self-tapes you know, uh, and, uh, and feel free to be like, hey, can you, like, if you're going to share the self-tape, can you just share the first 15 seconds? As long as I can share the first 15 seconds, I don't have to play the whole thing. If you feel self-conscious about me playing the whole tape in front of everybody, I get it. You know, um, it's helpful for me to be able to play at least those first 15 seconds, because that's when decision makers are really typically, like, making their assessment of, am I going to watch this whole thing or not? You know, and it gives me a chance to talk about, you know, the, what does it look like and the setup and and all of that, um, but you know, maybe then it protects you from some of the like nervousness, but I'll watch the whole thing and I can talk to you about it. So there's my pitch for why you should send me your tapes. Uh, I'll be back here at, from 5 to 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, UTC minus 7, next Monday, and I uh, hope to see some of you. Bye, everybody.